Hi guys, my name's Connor. I'm the co-founder of Your Compass, and today I'm going to be explaining exactly how I got into my dream degree with no ATAR. So it's a little funny now having my whole world revolve around further education. I often forget that not too long ago I was in all of your shoes. So I was just finishing high school, waiting for the offers to be released through you at and nothing came. As I'm sure a lot of you can understand, the amount of stress and disappointment and in some cases embarrassment you feel when you don't receive an offer through you, when you don't feel like you can get into university is quite substantial. And I definitely felt all of those emotions myself. So today I'm going to show you why that was completely unwarranted and how you can take specific steps in order to mitigate the amount of stress you'll be feeling and also open up your opportunities for university. The reason I was able to get into my dream degree without receiving the required ATAR, and in my case, no ATAR at all, really comes down to alternative pathways. So a lot of you may have some varying opinions and ideas of how alternative pathways actually work, but fortunately, I was able to find one that not only didn't cost me any extra in tuition fees, but also didn't take me any longer to complete my degree in total. So the duration of my time at university wasn't any longer and also didn't require me jumping between institutions. I didn't have to start at TAFE and then go to uni. I was in uni from day one. But before we get into that, I'm going to go over my story specifically, how I actually came to have no ATAR, and it might surprise some of you. Then I'll go over the exact pathway that I used and why I chose it. And finally, I'll go over some of the specific steps you guys can take to ensure that you can get into your dream degree also. So my story starts probably different to a lot of you out there. I actually grew up in Queensland and went to high school in Queensland. And it was during my final year of school, so year 12, that I decided I wanted to move to Sydney, New South Wales for university. So after making the decision to move, I obviously had to look into how I was actually going to do that. And you know, on, on my immediate thoughts that it wasn't going to be too difficult. It was still within Australia. Um, you know, they're, they're only for us on the Gold Coast, it's only a maybe half an hour drive to get to the New South Wales border. So I thought it would be quite simple. Little did I know it was going to be such a hassle. So as a lot of you may know, in New South Wales, they have the ATAR. And at the time, we didn't have that in Queensland. In Queensland, we got to choose. So there were two types of tertiary admissions scores that you could get. One of them was the OP, that stood for the overall position, and then the other was the QTAC ranking. And both of these were different, completely different from the ATAR. So considering I didn't know anyone else in my school who was going to have the same path as me, meaning moving from Queensland to New South Wales, I decided to get some advice. I wanted to know, because we had a choice, was there any benefit in doing one over the other? Just sort of getting an idea of what I should do. I was advised that the QTAC ranking would actually convert better to the New South Wales ATAR. So I went with that. Finish up the year as usual with everyone else who was doing the QTAC ranking and now fast forward to around about mid-December. So I'd already submitted my UAC application, just like all of you who apply for uh, university in New South Wales. It was coming close to the date where the offers were being released. But when that day came, I got nothing. No, no offers, no, no notification at all. I just logged in and it was ineligible for everything. And so obviously I began to worry. I had all of these grand plans in the next couple of months being we're now in December. So around January, February to move down, go to university, you know, I had to find a place to live and I hadn't received anything. And obviously that was super worrying, but it was also confusing at the same time. I had done enough research to see that if I had achieved what I did, I should have been roughly eligible for the courses I'd applied for. So I decided to give UAC a call directly. And what they told me that day literally made my stomach drop. That day I was told that I hadn't received any offers because they do not accept the QTAC ranking. In other words, they only accept the OP. I was given incorrect advice, which now meant that applying for university, I had no ATAR. They couldn't compare me against the other applicants, so I wasn't eligible for a direct application to a bachelor's degree. Obviously being really panicked at this point, I, I asked them, what am I supposed to do? I'm, I'm from Queensland, I've done something that's accepted in Australia, why, why aren't I able to be assessed? And that's when they said, well, 
you have to take a path or you have to call the individual unis and figure out what you can do because we can't assess you as is. And so with no other options, that's exactly what I did. Now at this point, I didn't really have an in-depth understanding of what a pathway entailed. Like I said before, I, I had an idea that maybe they would cost a little bit extra or they would add time to my degree. Maybe I had to go to TAFE first. Those were the sorts of things that I was thinking about. Now, for those of you who don't still don't really understand what a pathway is, basically it's just a way of proving you're ready to go into a degree aside from just achieving a certain ATAR. So whether you're just a few points short of the ATAR or you didn't receive an ATAR at all, or even you didn't finish school, there's a pathway to accommodate every one of those scenarios. So some of the questions you have to ask yourself when thinking about whether or not a pathway is right for you are these four. So the first one is what are the entry requirements? So what do I need to achieve in order to get into this pathway in the first place? What does it require me do? Do I need to go to TAFE beforehand? Do I need to do an enabling course? Do I need to start in one degree and then internally transfer to another? Will it add time to my degree? So is this pathway going to delay me starting my bachelor by a semester or a year? And finally, will it cost me extra? Am I going to have to pay extra in tuition fees in order to do this pathway to get in. Now, obviously, if we went through every pathway that was available, this video would go on for hours. So what I'm gonna do, I'm just gonna explain the exact pathway I used and sort of answer those questions with, with my case. And then hopefully, if it's right for some of you, it may be, but at least you'll know the sort of things to look for. So the pathway I used was the Diploma of Commerce offered by Macquarie University. So what were the entry requirements? At a first glance, it probably would seem as though this pathway would be out of reach also, because when you have a look on the website, you'll notice it does have a selection rank. Now, keep in mind, selection rank is just your ATAR plus any adjustment factors that you may have. So they had a selection rank of 60. So in my case, having no ATAR at all, it would appear as though I don't meet those entry requirements. However, when you look closer underneath the specific entry requirements section, I noticed it said, if you had HSC or an average HSC mark of 60 or above, then you can also get in or meet the entry requirements. So in my case, although I didn't have the required ATAR, I did achieve an average mark or over average mark of 60 in the subjects that I did, even though I was in Queensland. So what do I actually need to do as part of this pathway? Now, as I mentioned before, pathways can vary quite dramatically. So some of them may require that you do a separate test to prove that you're eligible. Others will require that you do an enabling course before you start your bachelor's degree. Now, where does the Diploma of Commerce fall? I was asking a lot of questions myself. I thought, you know, I'm wanting to get into a bachelor. I don't know if I want to do a diploma beforehand. It sounds like it's going to add time to my degree. I was actually pleasantly surprised to find out that the Diploma of Commerce is actually equivalent to the first year of the bachelor degree you transfer into. So in my case, transferring into the Bachelor of Applied Finance, in that first year in the Diploma of Commerce, I had done the exact same subjects as the students who were doing the Bachelor of Applied Finance from day one. So what that meant was I transitioned after the Diploma of Commerce straight into the second year of the Bachelor of Applied Finance. So that kind of answers the next question. Did it lengthen my degree? Not at all. So I started at the same time as everyone else, which is around about when I was doing it the end of February, and I transitioned straight into the second year of that degree alongside everyone else. Now, as a finance student, the next question was really important to me will this pathway cost me any extra? Now, before we go into the details of this pathway, there's something that I did want to preface. As Australian citizens, we are very fortunate to have the, the help loan scheme. Most of you will know it as HEX. What these schemes allow us to do is, instead of having to pay the tuition up front, which you know, in some cases can be tens of thousands of dollars per year, you're able to defer it with the government and pay it back later on after you start earning over a certain amount per year. Now, because of this scheme, it's very easy to label these tuition fees as a future me problem. But at the end of the day, even if we aren't paying off these fees right now, we do have to pay them off eventually. So I don't know about you, but I think it's probably best to do a little bit of research now to eventually save you tens of thousands of dollars later. So what did I pay? 
the diploma of commerce was actually the exact same amount per year as it was to do the Bachelor of Applied Finance. No extra tuition fees whatsoever. So for someone who started in the Bachelor of Applied Finance from the beginning compared to someone who did the diploma pathway, they paid the same amount in tuition. But enough about me, what are my tips for, for you guys for getting into your dream degree? Number one, speak to someone with information. The sooner you do this first step, the better. And because each pathway does have quite varying characteristics, it's best to get some information for someone who knows what they're talking about. For high school students, you may wanna to organize to meet with your careers advisor or your career counselor. But for anyone who doesn't have access to a careers advisor, or for those of you who just want a second opinion, the team and I at Your Compass would be more than happy to go through all of the options available to you and really navigate you through this journey. Tip number two, give as much information as possible. Now, I thought it was really important to include this step because giving a lot of information can literally be the difference between getting a great pathway and getting one that ends up being a headache. Deciding to pursue higher education is a huge decision and it really needs to incorporate all of the variables that are going on in your life. Not only will accurately describing your situation help you better understand your needs, but it'll definitely help the advisor in giving you the right information and the, the information that's most appropriate to you. And step number three is our specific pathways checklist. Now this last step ties in quite closely with steps one and two, and it really helps give you an idea of not only the questions that you've got to be asking and things you've got to be thinking about, but also good to assess your own situation. So the first one is, where do I stand academically? Am I currently in high school? Do I have an idea of what ATAR I'm gonna receive? Or have I not finished school? Have I done any further study? Have I gone to TAFE and done a certificate or a diploma? Um, those are the sorts of things that you're definitely gonna need to know and you're gonna need to tell your advisor. Number two, are you ready to jump into a bachelor? Do you feel you have the academic skills to start in a bachelor from day one or do you require any bridging courses? Number three, where do you stand financially? Does the pathway that seems the most appropriate to you require an upfront payment? Because some pathways do, and everything else may be perfect. And even considering the upfront payment, it may work perfect for you, but can you actually afford it? Or do you require to have the fees deferred on a loan? Number four, what's your availability like? Now, this is something that I didn't really think about too much when I was going in, but it's definitely something that after advising hundreds of hundreds of students, that is really important. Do you have the time to go into study? Some of these pathways will require that you come in every day of the week. Some of them may only require a few days of the week. So what works best for you with your current circumstances and your commitments that you have at the moment? And number five, do you have a rough idea of what you wanna study? Is there a particular degree you have in mind or maybe a career? It does help to look at this in both ways. So firstly, what did I enjoy studying in high school if you've never studied before? And where potentially could that take me in terms of degree and career? And the other way around, is there a career that I know someone has and it seems really amazing and seems like it would suit me really well? Can that go backwards? So if that's the career, what do I need to do in order to get to that career? And that's it. So that's how I got to where I am today, the pathway I use specifically, and the tips that I would give for you if you feel like you need to use a pathway to get into your dream degree. Now, I think the main thing to take away from all of this is although I didn't talk about all of the specific pathways that are available, no matter where you are currently, there is a way to get where you wanna go. Whether you have, like I said, never even finished school, there's a pathway for you to pursue the degree you want to, and it's just a matter of finding the information and going for it.